everyone. Welcome to discussion today on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. On the show today, we are going to talk about the need to gender sensitize the judiciary. Earlier this week, Attorney General K K Venugopal spoke of the dire need for gender sensitization of the judges, in particular those who are handling cases of sexual offences, and educating them about the importance of focusing on just facts. In case you are wondering what prompted the Attorney General to make such remarks, let me tell you, his comments came as the apex court was hearing an appeal against an order by a Madhya Pradesh High Court judge. that granted bail to an accused in a sexual assault case with a condition that he would request the complainant to tie him a rakhi now the attorney general expressed his deep displeasure with regard to this particular order saying such orders in case of a sexual assault are nothing but plain drama he also stated that the national and state judicial academies must educate the judges about what's permissible and what's not while also adding that the recruitment examination for the judges in our country should have an entire portion on gender sensitization so on the show today we are going to discuss with experts the reasons behind the insensitive nature of judiciary that we often see or hear about when it comes to handling cases of sexual offenses and of course what can be done to stop the trivialization of such sensitive issues So we are being joined by two eminent panelists on discussion today. Let me introduce them to you. We have with us uh, Justice Satish Chandra. He is former judge, Allahabad High Court, and S. P. Shrivastav, Professor, National Judicial Academy, Bhopal. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on Rajya Sabha TV, and welcome to discussion today. Justice Chandra, if I may uh, begin the program today with you. You know, the Madhya Pradesh High Court judge order. we all know is not one of a kind incident we often hear of such incidents such insensitive remarks coming from the judiciary from different parts of the country especially when it comes to handling cases of sexual offenses in fact there are also incidents where the victims are forced to reconcile with the accused help us understand the root cause of why this happens the insensitive nature of judiciary especially when we talk of lower subordinate courts is this just guided by plain patriarchal mindset or those in the judiciary who make such remarks are gender insensitive or is it some kind of punishment theory that they are following something like a reformative theory in the instant case the indore bench of madhya pradesh high court has granted the bail to the accused person in the uh, against the woman there was the case against this one with a condition that he will go to the victim's house and there will be she will tie a rakhi in his hand mm -hmm. in other words you can say that they will become the brother and sisters this was the condition for granting the bail and uh, whether this power was with the judge or not and how he has acted this uh, condition we will have to examine it mm -hmm. and before that we will have to go to the root cause from where they got the power judges in democracy there are the three pillars one is executive second is legislative and third is judiciary in every democratic country this constitution provides these the three pillars fourth is of course you can say hmm. that there is a press nowadays media but that is not recognized by the constitution so these three pillars are there and they have their own function yes. for example executive is responsible <coughs> to implement the law and the legislative uh, legislative is responsible to create the law to make the law and judge will have to implement it to see whether the law was rightly applied or not so what is prescribed by the legislatures the courts will have to implement it courts will have to apply it and that will provide you can say the uh, uh, justice according to law because law is created by then this is justice providing according to the law but sometimes uh, this happens the judges are applying their own law their own theory they are interpreting one, it that is correct or not so if we will see the lower courts lower courts have no right to interpret the law okay only high court with uh, and supreme court which are the constitutional courts they have the right to interpret the law in the jurisdiction uh, the high court can interpret and in supreme court 32 that is the writ jurisdiction and uh, slp as well as 141 article they can create the law and that is called as a judge made law 
only they have the law uh, creation power and that is uh, commonly known as judge made law and what is judge made law when there is a gap fill up the gap in the act itself in the statute there is some ambiguity something is there so they can fill up this gap and they can do uh, the justice to meet the end of the justice to alter the law in course of its function and bring the law in the harmony with the objects of the act what was the object of the act that is the harmony not against that one under 142 the uh, supreme court can pass an order decree which is necessary to do the complete justice that problem should come to the logical end yes complete justice so they can pass any order this power is given, uh, given to the supreme court only not other courts but cannot uh, bypass even supreme court cannot bypass the clear provision of the act if they want to bypass they will have to declare first this is the ultra virus okay that provision is ultra virus and they will have to set aside this one only uh, they can do if they are not declaring ultra virus then they are bound to uh, do the justice according to the statute and against the object of the law and the judgment law is a very small things uh, fill up the gap as i said and uh, to provide the justice and complete justice to provide the complete justice mm-hmm. but they cannot bypass uh, the clear provision of the law and this was laid down by the supreme court itself in bharat seva sansthan versus up electricity case 2007 they clearly said ki we cannot bypass the clear statutory provisions so this is the position of the judges lower judges cannot do high court judges they have limited power in jurisdiction supreme court has unlimited power 141 and 142 articles of the constitution so okay. this is the provision okay now question is this for granting the bail coming to the topic granting the bail singapore uh, convention of the judges where india was the party also they laid down some guidelines uh, for granting the bail bail what is why it is necessary because in india the pendency is so much even criminal justice takes a lot of time when i was in elabad high oh sorry uh, when i was in elabad high court so i saw that uh, 75 cases 1975 cases were pending then they will go to the supreme court and all these things uh, so that will take time 20 years sometime like this criminal cases uh, lot of time this is the main part. so why person should uh, be in the jail so bail can be granted on certain conditions mm-hmm. the purpose is this that accused should not be absconded so passport sometimes ask sometimes security ask and other conditions they can escape from, or they cannot go to the district concerned to influence the witnesses study power all these things are there but not such type of condition ki go to the house of the victim and tie the uh, rakhi let me also bring in mr shrivastava at this point of time uh, sir one very significant point made by justice chandra was that you know lower courts are exceeding their mandate by interpreting the law that's precisely what the attorney general said that they need to be taught about the importance of focusing on just facts so what i want to understand from you is uh, at the training level are the judges being trained about uh, being gender sensitive number 1 and number 2 on the necessity of just focusing on the facts on granting bail or delivering a verdict based purely on facts and not interpreting the law in their own way as pointed out by justice chandra today actually we are discussing certain remarks which have been passed by the madhya pradesh high court while granting a bail that's just one example in sir. this connection in, i would like to point picture. out that yeah. at national judicial at national judicial academy mm-hmm. and also at the state judicial academies we focus very basically and mainly on the gender gender sensitization gender sensitization is one of the major planks on which we impart training to to judges but you see our judicial education involves not only learning but unlearning because when judges judges are adult persons they are grown up persons and they learn so many things from the society from the very beginning from the very childhood they start learning and they start making up their minds so they develop some type of stereotypes ki what should be the behavior of a victim what should be the behavior of a witness what should be the ex- ex- accepted norm as far as the victim of the rape case is concerned and accordingly they try they try to judge the cases what we do at national judicial academy we open all the perspective before them okay. and say ki look bias in man is inherent nobody is free from biases and we need to unbias ourselves through the process of education so 
major most of the training programs we focus on gender sensitization actually gender sensitization is a very big problem and this comes from the you see training and learning which the judge get from the society he cannot divorce himself from the society and the learning that learning that he has acquired during all the period so it is sometimes it becomes very difficult to free the judges from their biases knowingly or unknowingly some but they function under the biases yes so we try to remove the biases as far as possible but high court judges or the supreme court judges they are uh, they are constitutional judges of the constitutional courts and while doing justice they can pass certain remarks but as far as the subordinate judiciary is concerned we are mainly focusing on the gender sensitization and lot of judges about 2050 judges 2000 or 2000 2500 judges every year they come to the national judicial academy and equal number of judges visit the state judicial academies and a major portion of curricula composed of consist of gender gender sensitization okay so maybe 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 there, there is a need to there is a need to impart these trainings repeatedly from time to time it should be a continuous process uh, coming back to you uh, justice chandra what uh, mr shrivastav pointed out of course judges hold a significant position in society the way common man looks up to them judges are expected to have of course a more uh, nuanced understanding of the law and of the law persons so such insensitive remarks of course as i said not just trivialize cases even the heinous crimes but they in a way dent the image of the judiciary number one number two they in a way deter the victim from coming forward and complaining i agree with you in the instant case this is the case of bail only this is not the final verdict punishment can be uh, will be awarded in due course after the trial but this is there in some times in lower court it has been seen that they pressurize the parties to finish the case yes and sometimes uh, there is a compromise uh, go and uh, have a tie this rakhi then there will be compromise bail granted like this this is there but one judge i remember he uh, after closing the case he asked the boy to keep the shoes on his head and have a round of the court campus that punishment was not prescribed anywhere this happens so this is a sensitization of the gender bias but why it is so the purpose of the court is to implement the law mm. implement the law means to implement and if there is a violation then grant the punishment punishment without punishment no act can survive in every act punishment is necessary and why this punishment is there and what are the theories of these punishment there are various theories for example you can say in various theories there are the deterrent punishment eye for eye tooth for tooth in muslim countries it is prevailing some are expiatory theory say sorry forgive and forget and also reformatory theory have the reformation but in india with the fear of the punishment the object is this to grant the punishment that people will fear it and others should also understood if we will do this act or this offense then we will also be punished accordingly yes this is their unlawful act that is offense hmm. not to be repeated in future this is the object so we are following the preventive theory which is the object of that theory is to prevent the crime in the society and in this preventive theory we can avoid the punishment and give the lesson to others and society can be protected like this but some judges are following the reformatory theory that there will be a reformation if we will take a liberal view if he will say sorry we can uh, forget and forgive like this 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 which is not permissible in law yes one thing is there clearly that is not permissible in law and uh, prevent the society protect the society from these offenders this is the things and habitual offender can't be reformed no matter how strong the laws are for the accused if you know the judges the judiciary is going to uh, come up with something like this ki rakhi banwa lo it will not be, uh, act as a deterrence at all and there, there is no guarantee that other will not follow it yes. they will say ki okay we will go to rakhi and nirbhay case you see and again there is a repetition in faridabad or other places so these habitual offenders hmm. or this tendency or this nature can't hmm. be there and uh, administration of justice cannot survive without the punishment definitely and this Mr. theory is essential punishment is essential mm -hmm. either and uh, as i said this is the preventive punishments preventive theory is there to prevent the crime that is the sole object 
and this should apply the law laid down by the parliament should apply throughout india that is essential for the judicial discipline true so these that reforms must be brought in as early as possible mr yeah. shrastav uh, what justice yeah. chandra points out that you know there are some judges some lower courts that are uh, following the reformative theory they believe that uh, for cases to reach their conclusion perhaps this is the best way forward but look at the kind of damage it's doing not just to the judiciary not just to the victims the injustice to towards the victims and the encouragement it is giving to the accused but also sort of uh, 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 trivializing the sacrosanct relationship of a brother and sister at national judicial academy at state judicial academy we try to sensitize them you look here if a if a person has come to the court their right must be protected and if we are not protecting the right and somehow we are disposing of the case on the basis of compromise or otherwise this is not the mandate of the court law therefore and for you see for this reason alone these these serious cases are not compoundable even if the parties agree they cannot compound these cases yes they have to go through the whole process of trial but unfortunately some remarks come we are at national judicial academy and state judicial academies we are trying to sensitize the judges to look here it's a serious matter very serious matter people come here for protection of their right and when they go after when they go back home after litigation is over mm. they must be satisfied ki at least their right is their right is vindicated this is prime duty of the court not just disposal of the cases yes and if this is very clear to the honorable judges subordinate judiciary and other judges then i think these kind of remarks will not be there so what are your uh, suggestions sir sometimes sir? some remarks here or there they come okay okay In so what are your suggestions sir to further improve the current uh, training programs if if there are any uh, uh, lacuna that can be uh, uh, taken care of and further improvements as to how to make the training uh, portion at least of the judicial uh, of the judges uh, more significant and more gender sensitive you are very and uh, we are we are trying to not only we are focusing on the gender gender sensitization and gender justice but now i think on, on the basis of these cases we will again um, bring to their knowledge that these are the cases and these are the remarks now think over all these things that whether these remarks were right or wrong so it a type of case study we generally focus on the case study okay. this was the case this was the facts and this was the judgment now come up with your solutions so this is how we try to un- make things possible for them to understand ki their role is very important and there is not their role is not just to dispose of the case yes. their role is to protect the rights this is very important otherwise the there will be no faith in the judicial system at all yes and we are trying to improve the curricula every every year uh, 2000 to 2500 judges come to national judicial academy equal number of judges visit state judicial academies and uh, we will again incorporate all these cases and the remarks given by the supreme court and attorney general okay uh, justice point. chandra the supreme court has indicated that it may come forward it may uh, frame certain guidelines when it comes to handling of uh, the sexual uh, offenses by judges so uh, do you think that will make a dif- difference and what kind of difference uh, is uh, is expected ma'am it appears that the supreme court is inviting suggestions from various quarters perhaps they are ready or they may let down some guidelines in such type of cases how the bail should be granted bail is an entry measure not the final measure and it is expected that the case should be decided by the judge mm. according to the law as well as the facts of the case no extraneous uh, facts should come or view should come in the light so this is expected that they will do it so justice can be done according to the statute okay. that is the mandate and okay. professor sri vastav rightly said that judicial academy which is a nice academy in bhopal i was there so is providing the services to the uh, society through judges they are training them they are telling them there is a group discussions all these things and now problem has come state judiciary will also take the uh, judicial academies will also take the step as well as the national and some guidelines will come are bound to come because law is flexible every time it is changing now this problem has come to solve this problem law will be laid down or some guidelines will be laid down the judicial system you know is largely <clears throat> male dominated 
I was reading up on the subject and during the course of my research, I found out that as on the 1st of September this year, there were only two women judges in the Supreme Court, which has a sanction strength of 34. The representation of women in the 25 high courts also remains a matter of concern as there are only 78 women judges against the sanction strength of 1,079, very less. So do you think uh, striking a balance, getting more women on board in judiciary be a big step towards uh, gender sensitization? Yeah, uh, as, far, as far as recruitment is concerned, this is based on the qualifications, on merit, not based on the gender. So this is always on the merit of the person concerned. Okay. They can be there and there may be, of course, uh, uh, women uh, are less in number, no doubt, and they are uh, not coming uh, in practice too much. But if, the, the if, male, if, uh, if sir, if sir, if sir, there are more women entering judiciary, merit. would it make a difference when it comes to the issue of gender sensitization? Now there is a reservation uh, for the appointment of 20% lady judges. So, subordinate judiciary, we are getting a lot of women judges, and they are actually doing a wonderful job at the subordinate judiciary level. Uh, high courts also, I think now, number of judges are increasing, and same is uh, true with the Supreme Court. So, but what, you what, right, what's, your th what's your uh, thought, Mr. Yes. Srivastava? Uh, let me take the same question to you as well. I believe you also <laughs> wanted to answer that. Would uh, more women in judiciary uh, help in the issue of uh, gender sensitization because women judges perhaps could be more sensitive towards uh, the women survivors of such heinous crimes. Ma'am, I fully agree with this proposition. If there are uh, lady judges uh, at the subordinate level, at the high court level, and even at the Supreme Court level, uh, as far as the gender justice cases are concerned, they are, they are very sensitive and that will improve condition of judiciary uh, a lot. So, there should be adequate, if not equal, then adequate representation of uh, lady judges in the judiciary at all levels. All at, right. Uh, at the subordinate judiciary judiciary level, we have seen that lady judges are doing extraordinarily good work at the subordinate judiciary level. And there is no reason why this practice should not be continued uh, at the level of High Court and the Supreme Court. That's something we're all hopeful, uh, sir. And the Attorney General rightly pointed out. Uh, let me take one concluding remark from Justice Chandra. Apart from strengthening the training programs, something that I already asked Mr. Shivastav, what else can be done besides the Supreme Court framing guidelines as well? What else can be done to perhaps uh, take care of the gender sensitization issue that's been rightly pointed out by the top lawyer of the country? This is a complicated problem. First of all, uh, from the recruitment, we have already discussed about it, but yes. pendency is another thing. Okay. In such type of cases, a lot of time is taken. And a female, that is a victim, always lost the interest in the trial. Hmm. And she is living somewhere after the marriage or uh, settled down somewhere else and going there. And there is uh, no, nothing except granting the uh, date, next date, date per date. That is there. So ultimately, they become frustrated. Hmm. So my view is this, they like fast food and all these things. There must be the fast justice and the quick justice in such type of cases where the gender sensation is there. Okay. So with that remark from Justice Chandra, uh, it's time for me to wrap up this edition of discussion today. Thank you to both our eminent panelists for joining us on this uh, very subject and helping us understand, analyze the root causes of this problem, why judiciary is gender insensitive at times, what can be done, how the current training programs can be strengthened, uh, as rightly pointed out by Mr. S.P. Srivastav, and how to overall gender sensitize the judges who are dealing with cases of sexual offenses. So once again, I thank both my panelists, uh, Justice Chandra and Mr. S.P. Srivastav, for joining us on Rajya Sabha TV. That's it from us on this edition of Discussion Today. You can also watch our program on YouTube and send us your feedback and suggestions about the program. You can also write to us on the kind of issues that you want us to take up on the program every day. Thank you very much for your time.